Hello my treasures, it's finally here, the balancing update for March of the Lich King. I think for this update we're getting 22 changes, most of them being buffs, which is always a great sign, and the cards that really needed it did get hit too, but we'll see how those all turn out. So let's begin with the nerfs. The first one is going to be to Wildpaw Null, which is now going to have the ability of cost one less for each non-rogue class card you've added to your hand. So this no longer allows you to combo this out with Maestro, which is absolutely crazy. I'm shocked that they are not actually giving you refunds for Maestra herself too, but I do think this card will probably see a little bit of play still in a pure Thief Rogue package. You just aren't going to see every single Rogue deck include the Maestra package any longer because you can no longer get this out really, really consistently really early on. This honestly should fix some of the frustration a lot of people are having against Rogue right now where they have a huge amount of mana cheat, which is incredibly frustrating to actually play against. The next change that is going to be happening is to Sinstone Graveyard, which is going to lose its stealth. This is probably a change that should have been done a long, long time ago because it turns out stealth is incredibly, incredibly frustrating to actually play against. However, because it doesn't look like a lot of the mana cheat for Rogue is going to be removed outside of Wild Paw No, I don't think this change will make this any less playable. Sure, it's going to be a little bit easier to actually deal with, and that will allow some control decks to be able to instantly deal with whatever big ghosty that you put down. However, outside of that, it's still going to be a huge body really quickly, and Rogue still has a shit ton of mana sheet, and I can't see a world where something like this remains unplayable. It's interesting to me to see how the location cards have actually worked out so far, where some of them have just been absolutely insane and annoying to actually deal with with and had to get nerfed while others have just never seen any play at all and really don't have any synergy outside of just being some type of removal tool. I'm curious of how locations will be dealt with in the future but until we see more it's nice to see that one of the most problematic cards out of all the locations is finally getting a hit. That might actually do a little bit more than just increasing its mana cost by one. The next change we are going to see is to Final Showdown, which is going to make the first step require six cards drawn instead of four, which actually probably kills the card. And while I do understand that this card has become quite a bit of a problem recently, it does make it me a little bit sad because I have had a golden copy of this since the pre-order of United and Stormwood, which means I will get a lot of dust, but at the same time, it became one of my favorite quest lines out of them all because it didn't feel too powerful until very recently. It always felt like it was missing one or two cards from being incredibly, incredibly strong, and it turns out we finally hit that breakpoint where it did need to see some changes to it. I do think you might be able to still use it as like a meme style deck, and it, I also do think this will probably push people back to the OTK demon hunter list with using no minions and the scythe to draw into your very powerful spell damaging minions which probably will make for a even more frustrating meta though we are going to be seeing another change that should help out versus that deck a little bit which is to sinful brand making it a two cost card instead of a one cost card i know this card when it first came out no one wanted to use it while at first glance it doesn't seem that powerful, even still, it was quite powerful in some of the newer lists now that we have a lot of cards that will actually generate 1-1 one, one minions that you can just rush into whatever big minion your opponent might actually put this down and then OTK your opponent through that instead. This is probably a change that needed to be done before it became a really big issue in a falling upset because I would be very shocked if we didn't see more demon hunter cards that actually summon 1-1 one, one guys with rush. And because those types of cards will always exist in Demon Hunter, I think a card like this did need to get at least hit to two. All right, now for the next change, which is to Shock Spitter, which is a shock to no one. Shock Spitter is being changed to four cost instead of three cost from its original two cost. This makes it a little bit harder to combo out with Bran, and you can no longer get two of these out on the same turn with Bran unless you're using Harpoon Gun which can still technically happen, but I do think this will make the deck a little bit more fair to actually play against because you're not going to have to worry about your opponent doing, I don't know, six times four damage in a single turn using this on turn 10 with Bran and two copies of it, or even more damage than that 
sure is still going to ramp up incredibly incredibly quick and hunter does have a lot of weapons currently to make this really really consistent and a lot of ways to actually get to your weapons so i don't think this will absolutely kill the deck but it will put it in a more fair position and it was one of the most frustrating cards to actually play against because when you lost against this card super early on and you knew that was the only way you were going to lose it just felt really bad when you're trying to do some wacky combo or some really crazy aggro deck all right now for the next change which is to the first death knight card to ever get a nerf glacial advance which is going to reduce the next spell that you cast that turn by one instead of two this is a change that allows the burst of frost decay to be lowered a little bit which is always a great change in my opinion and honestly it's a change that a lot of people were looking for it doesn't kill the card which is always a good sign and honestly how i prefer them to do the balance and changes and it does still allow frost decay to be a very powerful deck for what it is it is a little bit of a shame that death knights as a class was a little bit less of a hit than demon hunter but i guess they didn't want to repeat the mistakes of the past where Demon Hunter was just absolutely broken when it came out for release. And now for the next change, which is to our favorite, Alistair Bloodsworn. A change that everyone wants, or at least most people want, because this card is included in every single deck, it feels like. He is now going to have a Mana Thirst of 5 for his initial form. Phase 2 is going to have a Mana Thirst of 8. And his final form is going to have 7 damage instead of 8 and the mana thirst for 10 is going to be 14 damage instead of 16. I don't think this kills the card at all. It does lower the amount of damage you can actually possibly do with the card, which is always a nice change since this did feel like a replacement to Sire after he did get nerfed into Oblivion. I do honestly think this is a card that will probably have to nerf again in the nearby future, though with Bran rotating out pretty quickly, I don't know how powerful this card is going to be after the rotation once the next set comes out, if Bran does rotate out, and I'd be very much shocked if he doesn't. Druid can still do an insane amount of damage with this card, and other classes can also still do a bunch of damage with this card, given some of the other battle cry synergy they may or may not actually have. Now, let's look at some of the buffs that we're going to get. The first one is going to be to Battlefield Necromancer, which is going to summon a 1-3 Risen Foreman with taunt instead of a one two this should allow unholy dk's to be a little bit harder to actually kill their minions making a pretty decent change overall in my opinion to try to push that version of death knight forward since it does feel like unholy is the one that is the weakest out of the three next card being changed is to bone guard commander and it looks like it's going to be a very similar change to the necromancer where it's going to increase the hp of the risen footman by one this is probably for consistency factor making it much harder to actually deal with this card whenever someone does actually drop it and i do think a two unholy one blood deck will probably come into fruition or be a little bit better than it currently is, mainly due to the fact that this is a very powerful card for an unholy based deck. Now for the next card, which is Unholy Frenzy, which is going to be two mana instead of three. I don't think this will make this card any more playable. Sure, it does resummon all the minions that actually die and could act as an early game removal tool for an unholy DK deck. Now the role of being an early game removal tool for a aggro deck is always a really weird one because most of the time the things that you're going to want to remove are big taunts but this card doesn't really affect big taunts in any form of manner because it will also make your minions not be able to attack your opponent's face which is something that you're looking for when you're using something like this in a aggro based deck so outside of using it to remove a big minion after you attack with all your minions into your opponent's face that doesn't have taunt i don't think this one will see too much play in comparison to some of the other cards that death knight has right now next card being changed is to wither wither is going to be one mana and you should probably check out my video on undead druid because this card was absolutely insane in that deck this solves all the issues that something like unholy frenzy doesn't where you can actually use it on one of your opponent's big taunts and buff up all your minions while actually getting rid of the big taunt thus allowing you to hit your opponent's face this was already an incredibly powerful card and honestly might actually push undead druid into the minds of a lot of people i can't wait to see what people come up with i think this is a really nice change and it does affect a deck that was already 
quite playable. Next card being changed is to Bone Collar, increasing his HP by 1. If I had to do a change to this card, it wouldn't have been to increase his HP pool. I would have decreased his mana cost by 1 and kept his stat lines where it currently is, because right now, sure, one additional HP on a minion isn't that bad, especially because it is a taunt, but you do really want the death rattle off as quickly as humanly possible, and if you could put this down on turn 3, I would think it would be a lot better than, than putting it down on turn 4 with one additional HP than it already has. I do think this card was already pretty playable, so I don't think this will affect its playability by too much, but it is food for thought, I guess. The next card is going to be Haunting a Nightmare, which is going to be a 4-3, and it's also going to summon a 4-3 whenever you play whatever card it haunts in your hand, which is an interesting change. It does increase its playability by a little bit in a aggro-based undead priest deck. I don't remember how playable this card currently is, since I haven't actually tried to use it myself. The one downside about this card is... We know for a fact that Blizzard considered just making it an infinite loop where it would just keep haunting your hand until you had no cards in your hand, which would have been a much more interesting card in my opinion than trying to buff up the attack of this card again. It also is kind of funny that this now has the same stat line as Shadow Spirit, where it's going to probably get a lot of comparisons to, and i rather honestly run Shadow Spirit than haunting a nightmare in most decks. The next change is going to be to High Cultus Basilis, which is going to be 4 cost instead of 5. He should have been 4 cost to begin with. Right now, he felt like he was a little bit too slow to see too much play. I tried my hardest to include him in the Undead OTK deck that I actually put out like a month or so ago. And honestly, between all these changes, I do think this is probably going to push the deck to a place where it could actually compete, especially given the fact that some of the big outliers that would make a aggro based deck not fully function also got a hit on the nerfs. Next card being changed is to Darkon, which is going to be 7 mana instead of 8. This really doesn't affect the playability of this card at all. It really doesn't. Most decks that are going to run a card like this are going to be running the slimes to discard him, and thus summon a bunch of copies of him whenever the death rattle does go off. So his mana cost doesn't actually affect anything. What I would have done would have probably been increase his HP pool or maybe increase the amount of damage he does at the end of the turn. There's a lot of different ways you could have actually buffed up this card, but I don't honestly think this will affect too much. I have been testing out a deck to go along with this card, so I can't wait to try to make it actually fully function, but this change, in my opinion, doesn't affect much. Though the next change does affect a lot for that style of deck, which is to Infiltrate Reanimator, which is going to be... 5 cost instead of 6. This makes it a lot easier to combo this out with something like Bran's Bronze Beard, and if you can discount both copies of this plus Bran, and then you can get 6 of the previous card for the price of 10 mana, thus do 24 damage to your opponent's face while healing yourself up for 24 damage. It's a really funny, wacky combo that probably isn't the most consistent in the world, but this is a really good step in the right direction for a undead OTK Warlock deck to be playable, in my opinion, compared to the previous change that we just went over. Especially because it does make the minions that you do revive with this card much, much harder to actually move from your own board. And most people won't be able to deal with the entire board and then be able to deal with a bunch of revived minions. Next card being changed is to Vengeful Walloper, which is going to cost... 6 instead of 7. For a outcast demon hunter deck, I do think this is a pretty good change, but I don't think as a standalone deck this deck will do much, especially given the fact that most of the outcast cards currently in standard Hearthstone are all draw cards, which technically got an indirect nerf through the quest line, which was the only variant of this deck that I felt that was fully functioning in my opinion, and because it got hit indirectly, I don't think a outcast Demon Hunter deck sadly is playable. If we see some more outcast cards in the new rotation, then a card like this could be incredibly powerful, but it doesn't solve the issue that the deck doesn't really have a big win condition. If you want to make outcast Demon Hunter really work, I would have honestly changed Bloodthorn to be a one cost card. Sure, I know making it a one cost card might be absolutely broken, but you might 
rotate out with the new rotation depending on how blizzard is and it could have sent the card off with one last hurrah before it did now for the next card which is going to be energy shaper which is going to cost three mana instead of four makes him a little bit quicker a lot more playable and i love casino mage so this is a pretty good change overall Fast Wisdom is going to be 2 mana instead of 3, really good for Questline Mage, also good for Casino Mage. Both of these changes will probably make the deck a little bit more playable than it currently is. And honestly, speaking for Vast Wisdom, it's just a generically good card that you could include in a lot of different type of mage decks now. It was a little bit too high cost in my opinion before, and it does allow you to activate some synergy that you might normally not have with some of the other cards that don't see too much play currently in mage. Casino Mage is a deck to look out for. Next card being changed is to Time Warden to be 3 mana, which puts it in line with the previous change for Casino Mage. I do think this is probably done to be a little bit consistent between the different classes, and I do think that Dragon Paladin was already a pretty consistent deck from what I actually tested. I did make a weird Prester version, which was kind of funny, and, and this would have just made the deck a lot more playable than it already was, and I had pretty good luck with that deck when I was testing it out. Now for a change that I predicted, or almost predicted, as Vedon the Grand Shield. They are adding taunt to him and increasing his HP pool by one. I was always annoyed at the fact that he is the Grand Shield and he didn't have taunt on. I don't understand why they didn't actually give him taunt. I actually made a prediction on Twitter before I went to bed last night that they were going to add taunt to him. I didn't predict that they were going to add one additional HP pool, but that does make a little bit of sense. This does also put him in line with a lot of the other synergy that, that currently exists in standard Hearthstone, so we do have some type of legendary as a capstone card instead of having nothing for a taunt warrior based deck. For example, you could use bulk up to get additional copies of him or use some other cards to buff him up, such as Last Stand that will also be which also will be seen a change later on. The next change being done is to Disruptive Spellbreaker, which is going to have one more HP, making it have six HP instead of five. Much like the previous card, I'm shocked that they didn't actually just give it taunt. That would have made it a lot more playable with a lot of the taunt synergy that does currently exist in standard Hearthstone. And it also does give it a home instead of just being in a control style of deck where you just have it as an additional five drop that you may or may not actually want to use but i don't know how many control warrior decks actually were using this i know this could be an incredibly powerful effect depending on what your opponent is actually playing but as it currently stands a lot of the decks in standard hearthstone don't use too many spells and this could easily just whiff because blizzard has put a focus more on the board instead of on your opponent's hand i also would have maybe preferred to actually lower the cost of this card by quite a bit and then lower the stats line so just so you could actually put it down way earlier than it currently stands because a lot of the spells that you might want to make your opponent discard are going to be much cheaper than this card is right now and thus you're not going to be able to use it. I just honestly think they probably missed the mark a little bit with this card. The next card being changed is to Last Stand. It is going to be a one cost card now, which is absolutely insane, but it's going to have a mana thirst of seven for doubling the card that you draw as stats. This makes it a lot more playable if you want to use it early on. However, it does make it a lot harder to actually get the double stat benefit off of whatever taunt you actually want to play down with it, which makes it a little bit worse there in my opinion. This is one of those cards that I've been trying to make work ever since March of the Lich King actually came out. And honestly, I've been trying to make a Taunt Warrior deck work for quite a long time before that even. The one issue that I keep running into whenever I do play a deck like that is the fact that it doesn't really have that much mana cheat. And given how Hearthstone currently is, without mana cheat, you're not going to be able to get some of these weird wacky combos off very consistently. The nice thing about this card is if you have one really key Taunt minion, then in theory you could use this to always draw into that card, but currently in standard Hearthstone there really doesn't exist a Taunt minion that you would always want to draw into really early on, besides maybe like Talion just so you could get your highest cost card out of the deck. There might be some type of strategy where you're going to want to try to do something like that, but I don't think this is going to make 
taunt more any more playable than it currently is the next and now for the next card that got changed which is to nelly she is going to reduce the minions that you discover off of her by two instead of one this doesn't put her in the position where she previous was where she reduced them to one cost but this does allow you to still try to use her in a questline warrior deck or any other deck that you might want to generate some additional pirates this does make it generating mistress might off of this card a lot better just because of the fact that you're more likely going to be able to play down all the priorities on the exact same turn but i don't think this is going to absolutely break the card it's a nice little middle ground for the fans of questline warrior or even pirate warrior or any other decks that might actually want to use her now for the final card being changed which is to remoria the living blade she is going to have five attack instead of ten for the combo that I put out a week or two ago, this does absolutely jack shit, which is the only place that this card will probably ever see any play because the card by itself isn't the best one in the world. Problem with this card isn't the attack value on the card, it is the cost. The cost a little bit less, maybe one or two, and I think this card would be a lot more playable as it currently stands because there's a lot of synergies that you would love to use in combination with this card, but because it is a minion within your deck and only a weapon on the battlefield, you can't use some of those cards. For example, a much overlooked legendary and standard hearthstone is ashvane who buffs up all the weapons within your deck hand and battlefield if i remember right if that card actually was a aura effect instead of a battle cry effect that only affects things that currently exist in your deck then you could use it in combination with this to buff up it by a lot and probably would actually save that card too Sure, that might sound a little bit broken in most people's mind, but you could also increase the cost of that card just to make up for the fact that it is an aura effect. I don't think that would make Ashvane too playable, but it would allow you to play in some type of meme a deck if you really felt like it. And I honestly would have loved to see Remoria maybe get buffed up to 6 mana in order to make her a little bit more playable, but as it currently stands, I don't think... Even with one additional attack, she'll be any more playable as it currently stands. All right, so those were all the cards that were changed today. Let me know down below what decks uh, you're most looking forward to actually using. I think I'm going to start with a Undead Warlock deck, just because it does sound the most funny out of all the possible changes that we could go through with. And like always, if you enjoyed the video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, bye-bye.